new photographers in my photography classes ask me, should I be shooting JPEG or RAW? What is a RAW photo? I read about it on a blog somewhere. I don't really understand it. What should I be doing? Here's the thing. When they ask that question, it really needs a visual answer. Rather than tell you all about RAW files, I just want to show you the difference between a JPEG and a RAW and the power of shooting RAW. I'll record all sorts of other videos that explain what a RAW file is, how to edit them and everything, but let me just show you, let me convince you by showing you here. So this right here is a photo that one of my students named Christopher took a couple of years ago. And thankfully, he had a setting on his camera that allowed him to shoot JPEG and RAW. So every time he took a picture, his camera saved two copies of the picture, a JPEG copy and a RAW copy. Now, what do you notice about this picture? First of all, it's kind of a cool shot. It's, it's symmetrical. You got train tracks running down the middle, trees on either side. Um, but notice the sky in the background. It's really overexposed, isn't it? The sky is really completely blown out. Now, with a program like Lightroom or many other kind of advanced editing programs, even basic editing programs today, will often let you take a fine control over editing your photo. So let's just look at this real quick. And let's say, well, the sky is too dark, so let's try and darken the photo a little bit here. So the sky starts to get better, but what do you notice about the rest of the photo? Right, exactly. The rest of the photo gets dark too. So what we're going to do instead is use the highlight slider, watch the sky. It's going to get better and better and better. And notice the rest of the photo doesn't change much. Now, that's about all we can do to fix the sky in this photo. We can, we can kind of get there. Um, there's not a whole lot more that we can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the raw file over here. So we were just working on the JPEG photo and I showed you how much we were ab able to salvage the sky. Watch what happens when we do the exact same thing with a RAW file. Look how much sky we were able to save. Let's compare the two photos here side by side. The one on the left is JPEG. The one on the right is RAW. So this right here should convince you. And sorry, the, uh, the RAW file is taking a while to load. I have a brand new computer. and. And um, I really upgraded big time, and it's as slow as molasses in January, as we say in Canada. So here is the JPEG file. Look at the sky. I, I could rescue it a little bit. Here is the RAW file. I was able to rescue it big time. And of course, we can continue to edit this photo, because the rest of the photo is a little bit dark, right? So why don't we bring the shadows up a little bit, something like that. If we want to add a little punch and contrast, we can bring the blacks down like that. And uh, we could even add a little bit of texture. I mean, there's other things we can do, but look at how much we've been able to salvage this picture. And that's the raw file. When we look at the JPEG file, actually we can look side by side. Um, look at the difference. JPEG, raw. I mean, hopefully that convinces you so when would you shoot raw? Basically, you would shoot raw when you're in kind of a tricky lighting situation like this, where you've got a bit of a shadowy scene, but then you've got this big bright sky in the background. And what happens is um, quite often the camera is just going to get like one or the other right. So in this case, what it got right was the trees and the track, and it didn't really get the sky right. The sky got overexposed. So really, the reason why you want to shoot raw is because you have so much extra leverage when it comes to editing.